where where does the government find the money there are immense opportunities opportunity to raise resources we can think about gold amnesty stroke disclosure scheme there is more than 2 trillion dollar worth of gold lying in india but most of it is in tijori in black economy if we structure gold amnesty scheme appropriately and execute it with military precision targeting just 10% of gold stock in india that's about 200 billion dollar in resources a 25% tax rate and mukesh bhai is a better person to tell what tax rate is appropriate it's 50 billion dollar in taxes and more importantly 150 billion dollar in terms of equity capital in businesses of india the second thing is to realize better value for our psus in 2008 january bsc psu index was 11205 sensex was just about 21000 Today, after 12 years, Sensex is up 2.25 times at 47,000, but PSU index is down 48 percent to 5,900. PSU index has performed broad market by 173 percent in last 12 years. The whole of PSU trades at below book value. Clearly, PSUs have been derated. now if we adopt strategic divestment then this psus can be re-rated and if i just assume that all psus start trading at higher end of their valuation which they have traded in the past that's an appreciation of 7 lakh crore 7 lakh crore will be appreciation in the reduced holding of government in psus after 12 years of divestment if all the ps2 start trading at the higher end of their valuation now one can say that 7 lakh crore nilesh bhai fek raha ho aap let me tell you story of hindustan zinc which was divested for 45% of the company in 2023 for 769 crore today the 30% holding of government valued at 30000 crore it has appreciated 59 times in 18 years so strategic divestment can create value we should pursue that path to increase government's holding in psus the third thing is to bring underground black market economy into formal economy if you read data about indian spending in casinos of macau singapore las vegas Nepal, it's a staggering amount. We all hear large-scale betting in IPL, election, and other events throughout the year. In Mumbai and many other places, matka market thrives, just like lot. Even though lottery is there, now can we legalize such criminal activities so that they can become responsible industries like in Western world? And let me give you an example of lottery in Kerala. Kerala lottery based on 2018 data collects revenue of 12000 crore and generates profit of 2500 crore this is the power of bringing activity into formal economy today kerala lottery contributes 80% of non tax revenue to the state the third thing the another thing is about minus of smuggled and fake cigarettes tobacco institute of india it's an industry body it says 25% of cigarettes sold in india is smuggled or fake smuggled cigarette is such an attractive opportunity that when covid 19 return is were coming some of them were found to be carrying smuggled cigarettes it's that attractive we need a rule of law focused efforts to ensure that smuggled cigarettes and fake cigarettes don't happen we can't eliminate them but from 25% can we bring it down that's roughly about 10000 crore in revenue
Let's look at the Vivase Vishwa scheme. I think in my view, it's excellent. But unfortunately, a few weeks after the scheme was announced, we went into COVID and we didn't have an opportunity. The government didn't have an opportunity to market it. It's ending on 31st of December. Why not extend it till 31st of March? We had this scheme. We were forced to extend it because of COVID. Three months is not going to make a whole lot of difference. To the basket of uh, divestment, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, and, and that public sector banks, let's leave out the four large lenders where government is not very keen, State Bank, Bank of Baroda, Union Bank, whatever they may be. But why not the government reduce the, its stake in public sector banks by 50%? I mean, you know, you gave an example of Hindustan Zinc uh, uh, and I was not aware of that, but that's just suggestive of the fact that when you do strategic investment, uh, that's the kind of uh, uh, benefit the government reaps in. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, government intelligently thought many, many years back that there is no sense in having a holding in Maruti Suzuki Limited. So I think there are uh, many ideas uh, on the table uh, that can be used. The only thing that I would suggest is that uh, much as there is a temptation uh, from reform measures that are coming from the Western part of the world to raise the taxes, India should not fall into that trap. And the reasons for that are twofold. Our economic trajectory and the nuances of uh, a growing economy are very different than the Western part of the world. Uh, number two, uh, more importantly, uh, we just had a reduction in the corporate tax rates uh, in August 2019. And I think we will be sending a very wrong signal to do anything, despite the temptation that we have. I think given the advanced tax uh, figures that are throwing up from the December installment of advanced tax, we should not run into that form of, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, policy, uh, uh, you know, makeup. Uh, in fact, I would say that look at, uh, you know, you know, a, a more liberal regime for uh, startups, particularly on the ESOP side, there is a lot of scope. Uh, look at extending the startup benefit from seven uh, to 10 years. Look at a greater level of amortization for R&D expenditure. One area which is sensitive, I know politically, but I will nevertheless put my foot in my mouth is the agriculture sector. So I completely understand uh, the political compulsions, but I think we wrongly understand the whole agriculture sector as one sector. I mean, it's really divided into produce, marketing, and allied activities. So there is nothing that stops the government from taxing the marketing activity. And there is nothing that stops the government from taxing the allied activities. We have a uh, provision within the income tax statute on things like tea manufacturing, where a part of it is considered as the farming and agriculture activity and part of it, the processing of tea is considered as a commercial activity. We can look at debundling this activity. I don't see any reason why the agricultural allied activities should be left untaxed. Similarly, uh, as we see the rollout of the farm bill, uh, the marketing will become much more institutionalized and that would give its own set of uh, revenues for the government. I also think that there is opportunity for the government to demonetize uh, a lot of land that it is sitting on. Finally, on uh, uh, strategic investment and divestment, I think we have a tendency to look at the central government PSUs. Let's look at the state level. I think we have an even deeper issue at the state level. It's one thing to say that it is entirely the prerogative of the state government to decide whether they want to divest or not divest. But why can't the central government lay down a framework, at least identification of the state public undertakings, at least, uh, you know, uh, make a suggestion, an, an advisory, which may not be binding on the state government because the state legislative assembly will have to take it. I have no doubt in my mind that with a successful divestment program for uh, central public sector undertakings, many of the states would be encouraged to look at divestment, including 
monetization of large patches of land so other than the land which belongs to the uh, army or the air forces all the land at the state level are within the a uh, state uh, level uh, regime and hence the state governments can also look at it provided the central government lays down a framework which will encourage states to pick and choose and entirely at their discretion immediate focus could be on i think divestment and asset uh, uh, monetization because that will we've been hearing about it for a long time and nothing much has happened uh, i think uh, as mr botani pointed out about uh, taxation of agriculture i mean earlier the revenue did come from agriculture because agriculture used to be 80 to 90% of the economy now it is about 15% and i think after 20 years it will be 3 4% of the because the non agriculture is growing much faster than agriculture so i think uh, well i think from a uh, uh, from a, from a equity perspective i think it might be good to tax parts of agriculture maybe but it's not the right time to think about it we have to make our strategies in three folds immediate source and gen resource generation moderate medium term resource generation and long term resource generation what mr shah and uh, mr butani had pointed out are moderate or long term now uh, mr butani had pointed out on divestment i will give you uh, uh, my opinion on divestment see the objective of divestment is what resource generation yes or government doesn't is not interested to do that particular business or selling the or the companies when they are generating profits what is the basic objective of divestment what what i can understand the objective of divestment and that should not be that a profit making organization which is doing making profit gradually the profit comes down and then suddenly government decides on that divestment i don't think this is the basic purpose or basic nature so i personally feel that divestment strategy should be a more open minded and rather than selling the loss making one has to find out because selling loss making is difficult and it creates a lot of negative impact for the economy as a whole i will give you example rajiv as an indian i don't like that example that a national carrier of my country or our country doesn't have any taker it's it's not a, a matter of pride it's a i i feel bad about this issue so and and when that that news uh, comes to uh, the the fdi investors it creates a a a a, a, a point where everybody makes a jokes out of that so i think government is not clear about divestment that which enterprises they want to divest sometimes they say that the, uh, we we are going to have the divestment in the banking industry sometimes they say we had selected these 23 companies sometimes they will say we had uh, issued a rfp for this particular company and there is no taker so there should be a proper strategy second point uh, rajiv uh, regarding resource generation we require rate rationalization also other than the innovative ideas what mr shah had pointed out like uh, I, i had my own question that do all of us feel that in our country the bikes should be taxed at 28% gst the motor bikes do we feel that motor bikes are the luxury items so we require a rate rationalization and there is a historical empirical evidence that the countries who had done a rate rationalization had effectively increased the revenues had increased the sources of their inflows for the in the government kitty this is point number 2 point number 3 uh, rajiv whenever we talk about resource generation we we comes out with our own policy and what happened in 6 years we had seen in the past 6 years a contradiction in the policy that should be stopped i will give you a very a, a unique example like make in india scheme rajiv i am not against that scheme that was a good scheme to have a manufacturing in our country although that's another point of view that in the last 6 years the manufacturing share in the gdp had consistently reduced but in make in india who who all had started their business enterprise majority of the firms were chinese companies they started their manufacturing facilities in our country now suddenly there you have, we had a policy called as vocal for local so it is giving a contradictory signals to the market 
कभी बोलते हैं मेक इन इंडिया में चाइना आ जाओ अब बोलते हैं वोकल फॉर लोकल सो आई थिंक दीज आर द मेजर बॉटल नेक्स और द हर्डल्स इन द रिसोर्स जनरेशन these things should be uh, answered properly proper policies one is the monetization of uh, resource assets with the psus that is on the card that is that can generate lot of resources for certain uh, psus and for the central government departments also like railway and other thing so monetization of assets is one area which uh, government uh, will focus second is about the uh, listing of bond in the last budget government had announced mega schemes on global listing of domestic bonds and index uh, uh, listing in the index also there also again the focus will come because that scheme did not pull off uh, because of uh, changes in the pandemic so this is the second area where the resource will be looked into on the dis disinvestment uh, it was a good idea about uh, looking into state psus also but uh, disinvestment is the third area where government uh, will uh, focus on generation of uh, um, uh, resources and uh, with all the differences i agree with uh, gorav vallabh ji that when he said that we should not look into only loss disinvestment of uh, loss making psu because that is with nilesh ji here on the panel and mr dk joshi also there but ultimately it is the demand from the industry uh, capital market and other where which uh, scripts you can sell ultimately um, uh, socially or in a political narration it may be good that we focus on disinvestment of psu but it is not uh, possible to disinvest that you can only get good valuation for companies which are performing well and we all everybody agree that uh, uh, psu is one area which is creating lot of drain on the government resources instead of generating resources majority of psus are a drain on the government resources so uh, with capital market in good shape lot of fdi for flowing into india um, uh, about the uh, uh, large chunk of foreign exchange reserves which needs a very focused uh, policy from the reserve bank how to utilize that how to invest them how to get benefit of such large surplus foreign exchange reserves that is one area which can also help into government uh, making certain policy initiative but a uh, disinvestment is a, an area where a, a strong um, a movement from the government is required in a, where expert on the capital market uh, can only uh, de decide because it's a political uh, narration also uh, which uh, hampers the thing uh, 